Mr. Will, and we are here with my crew. Today, I got my boy, Owen, from TBH Dallas. What's good? What's good? What's good, fam? I got my boy, Tony B, from TBH Spoke, 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 Spoken. You already know. Let's go. All day, every day. And you know I got my girl from the big TX. Bell, what's going on, lady? Yo, oh, we got, <laughs> and we got all sorts of little balloons flying across her screen and everything. That was. <laughs> yep. Yo, guys, on today's episode, what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring you guys Raiders news and notes. We got, hey, we just played a game, so we're gonna do a little game review, a little recap. And we're going to get on with this week's game and this week's event. So, guys, let's get locked in. Let's get going. Yo, Raiders news and notes. Big news coming out today. We sign Nathan, the man, Peterson, <laughs> back to the Raiders, baby, for the 85th time. And he is back. Guys, not to add to the quarterback competition, but in my opinion, we added him because uh, we needed a little bit of depth. And we saw that Anthony Brown Jr. wasn't working out too hot. So we bring back Nathan Peterman, a guy that, you know what, at one point was a fan favorite, a guy that does a, has done a lot of good things for the Raiders. And honestly, you know, I have nothing to say but good things about this guy. So, guys, let me get your thoughts on this. Tony B., give me your thoughts on bringing back Peterman, baby. I also I I don't mind it as much uh, as some people do. They're like, what's the you know they were, you know, hey, why it's so early? You know, he only had one game. Give him a second. My thing is, I think with other quarterbacks, negative play and injuries like the McCarthy injury, we jumped to grab him before someone else did. So like to add depth to us before someone added depth to them. So I believe it's a good signing. It was a good block for some. Um, he, like you said, he was a fan favorite. It wasn't like he left because of we were mad at him or something. So I, I like it. It's it, it mean, depth is good. I mean, he probably won't see the field. Hopefully he don't see the field because that means one of the top two isn't to the the standards. But I don't mind the signing at all. All right, brother. Yo, all in. Thoughts on Nathan Peterman being signed? Man, yeah, yeah, like Tony said, man, it is kind of is what it is—a a backup to the backups, right? Uh, so to speak. I mean, he just—he he probably won't play. I mean, he won't see the field at all. So, it is what it is. Uh, hey, nothing dude. to get too excited about. Nothing to really frown about. No, I, I agree, and I mean, like. So there's something about this, though. This pick has depth to it. There's something that, you know, last year we noticed, hey, we had Jimmy G. We had every single guy out there. You know, we got down to the third string. So having a guy at the third string position that doesn't add to your roster numbers and really, you know, a guy that you need as an insurance policy, I see that it's a great job by the Raiders adding back to their roster and saying, hey, man, yeah. you know what? We need a guy that if something goes down, that is going to be able to handle this situation and handle it effectively. And that's what Nathan Peter meant. An insurance policy just in case the first guy and your second guy go down. Um, Val, are we still on or did you have to jump off real quick? No, I'm here. <laughs> All right, Val. So, Wow, we signed a third-string quarterback, but I got some exciting news for you. All in was just filling me in right before in the green room, and I just read it right now. JPJ is back off the pup list. Let's go, Raiders. You know, the second-round draft pick, girl, from Oregon is now back. You know, he got – he had, uh, I guess, a concussion issue. We, t- we discussed it in the show earlier in the season. I think it was like two shows ago, but we really didn't know because not a lot of information was given 
about it. So I've been like, JPJ is back. We get a third round, or we get our third quarterback on the roster. That's he's practicing he's, tonight. He's practicing tonight. Oh, is he? Yep. That's huge. Tony, you know, what are your thoughts on JPJ coming back, baby? We, I, I love, I mean, we, we need him to get reps out there early. You know, I mean, we got a couple games that we need him to get either on the practice field and in the games because it's needed. Like he needs, he needs that time, but I, I, I'm going to love the energy that he's going to bring, the intensity he's going to bring. And I think it's going to be a, a well needed added uh, person on the lineup. So I, I, I said it at the beginning. I love him. I mean, I love the the Raider way that he plays with, and I'm excited, man. I'm really excited to see what he can do. No, absolutely. Yo, all in. Thoughts on JPJ coming back? Yeah, 100% what Tony said. It. You know, it's all about reps. Got to get those reps in. We saw what happened, like I said, a few weeks ago with uh, Tyree not getting any offseason or training camp reps. And what, what that led to, you know, during the regular season, he really didn't come on until the end of the season. So, but again, like I said, don't, you know, don't bring him back too fast. Uh, you know, we, we're not 100% certain what the injury was. If it was a concussion and he's cleared to play, then, I'm you know, he's fine. I'm yeah, sure. Absolutely. Be interesting That's... if he plays this weekend. That is what I'm interested in. I want to see yeah. if he makes it. I don't know if they'll let him play. I think they'll – yeah, I don't know. That third game. But you know what? This last game, guys, really proved that our offensive line is battered. Our offensive line right now isn't at 100% strength. And it showed in the run game, and it showed with a lot of the blitzes that they were able to get through. I'll be like, for a preseason game, I felt like the quarterback was, you know, sometimes they had a clean pocket. I'm not going to deny the fact. But yeah. there were some things that there were some mistakes up front that were small that an experienced group, a Colton Miller, you know, a JPJ, a guy like that, they, they don't make those type of mistakes. So we got actual film from the game. But right now what I want to get is your guys' instant reaction to game one. Val, ladies first. I need your reaction to game one. You're sitting at the bar. You're sitting there screaming. At, you're probably at chill, Were you at Chill Grapevine? No, I was at Shankerton's. Okay, at Shankerton's. Screaming at the TV. Being intense. Val, tell me how did you feel as a Raiders fan to finally have football back, baby? So let me let me say I blog every day to play like, work. I Raiders something, right? I was so stoked. So when Saturday came, I was like, "Let's get it." Is it time yet? Is it time yet? Um, just seeing being at the bar, watching watching them on the TV. Like before the game started, I was like, "Where's it at? Is it not starting yet?" Like I was getting impatient at this point because it's like you know it's right there and it's like you have to be patient and it's like Fuck. but it, I was so happy I was like yes like this is my life is complete this is what life's supposed to be right here Raiders on the TV like I'm good like I'm happy so I felt like you know I don't know without without some football on the TV I was kind of feeling like you know I was like about to get <laughs> Oh, like, like, I'm, I'm in the twilight to... zone without no football. I'm getting bored over here, you know. So it was, it was, uh, it was great. I was so I was in heaven, and um, but it was good watching the game. You know, watching everybody, watching um, everybody, kind of like just like mixed around. You're like just seeing what everybody. Just observing. I, I was yelling. Of course, I was yelling at the at the TV, but it was nice to be able to observe and watch everybody um, do their thing. Um, not just for, you know, the Raiders, but just watching the Vikings. It's just, it was good. It I didn't feel like it was like competition, like who, who, you know, like winning, 
of course, you know, I want, you know, I wanted the Raiders to win, but at the same time, it's just nice to see and just say, just knowing that this year is just going to be different. I got you though. So what, let me get your overall thoughts of game one. Um, well, there's a lot of sacks back to back, but, um, um, like I said, it was, it, it's a, it's, it's the first game. Okay. Okay. Observing, enjoying, and at the same time, it's like, it was, it was questionable. It started getting real questionable because we were in the lead and I don't, you know, like somewhere in between something happened and then the timeout, I don't know. No, no, uh, I got you. It was a tale of two halves. The first half, uh, the Raiders look really fucking good. I mean, like, the first half, I think all of us can agree right here that we went into halftime saying, whose team is that? We scored 20 points by halftime. I was like, what is going on? But, right. yeah, it, it, it was really interesting. It's a little bit different. You know, the second half, we have a lot of guys out there that are not going to make the roster, and we know that. But – I love it, Val. I love it. And you were like, yo, you saw that. You saw the difference in the tail of two halves. And you were like, hey, you know what? We're still developing. We're still getting better. So, yeah. Hey. <laughs> She's like, yeah. She's like, I just wanted to fucking win, asshole. <laughs> I know. And then, like, me and one of the sisters, like, we started off with a bucket, right? We're just like, oh, we're just going to split this bucket. Well, bucket turned into two and then some. And I, that was like second half after halftime. I was like, <laughs> she's uh, like, I saw the game till halftime after halftime. She <laughs> now we know why it was a tale of two halves. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, you said you, you said something like, like the first half was great. We we saw what we wanted to see in the first half. What yep. we needed to see in the first half started off slow. It picked up. The quarterback play looked like they both wanted the position. They yeah. want the spot. They played well. Um, there was mistakes expected in the first preseason game. But when we started to lose, it's guys that are not going to be on the field mostly. So I was okay with we won the part of the game that we needed to win. And that was when our starters and our second teamers were out there. We were great at times. We were okay at times. We'll see better as we go. But to get people back at our venues, on the field, in the stands, regardless if it's away or not, Raider football is back. And we're ready to go. Like, it gave us a good start. It gave us a good kickoff. And... I know we say preseason is preseason, but I'll tell you what, we better beat those Dallas Cowboys next fucking week. That's all I got to say about that. Yes, shit. sir. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's yeah, get it. Let's get it. Yes, sir. Yo. Because I, I don't want to hear it. Because that's one <laughs> fan base. That's one fan base that it don't matter if it's preseason or not. They're going to be running their mouth. The next two weeks, we need to win. Yeah. Yep. We just need to win all of them. Fuck it. We need to run yeah, the table cause... and go to the ship. San Francisco, they're fucking annoying too. Oh, that yeah, that's. I mean, and but what <laughs> we I hate like, everyone. <laughs> what I did like though is I saw, uh, like uh, some people. I mean, you probably saw it, but the way they used Brock Bauer out the backfield was lovely. I got Lo you. I got you. I got you. I got line them at that. the fullback position. Because no one barely guards the fullback because you're not expecting them to catch the ball. But I you run him out the backfield, and it's all oh, – I was loving it. I love wait the till, – Wait till they hand him the ball out of the backfield because that's coming. Oh, I just want to see him touch the ball. Like, I love the fact that they are trying different stuff with a person that we need on the field. I, know, like, I got you. Hey, the, I'm hey, ready. I, I'm going to bring this play for you, okay? Since Tony talked about the play, and guys, we got it. So, hey, I'm going to go to All In right after the play, all right? But because you already brought up the play, I wanted to make sure that I got it on the screen for us here. 
because Tony is talking about. The and I didn't know it was coming, by the way. I just happened to like the play. That, yeah, he's absolutely correct. Okay, guys. I so, wasn't told what was on the lineup prior to the show. I came in late again. So here's an, all right, here's <laughs> one way we lined up Bowers. All right, I got here's here's the way we lined him up at wide receiver. I'll look for the one for fullback, like you said. But here he's lined up at wide receiver. This is the versatility we were talking about. This guy can line up everywhere on the field. Let me see here. It's a Debo type player. Yeah. And I'd be mean, like, literally, guys, with a guy like that, that can line up in the backfield like Tony. Tony, I'm going to look for the other play. Like I said, I'm like, this is the one where he's lined up at wide receiver. That's an ability that, man, he's like a wild card. I love it. But, yo, all in, like I said, I'm going to get to you right now. Give me your thoughts, brother, on game one against the Vikings. Man, yeah, like we said, tail of two halves, right? I was yeah. uh, I was hoping more out of the defense in the first quarter. The Vikings offense dominated the first quarter. I was hoping to get some more AFC, uh, at least, you know, two drives out of him. Uh, so that that was a little disappointing, you know, but it is what it is. It's football. Um, I thought Gardner looked good. I got the game on right now. Jack Jones just picked it. <laughs> uh, no, I, you know, the defense – the defense look good. They'll come around, and uh, the offense too. I, I liked I liked the way Gardner looked. You know, he had more opportunities in AOC, so we'll see what this week looks like. Um, but you know, I I, th- I think uh, uh, Gardner's ability to get out of the pocket has him leading this job right now. No, absolutely, man. And hey, guys, I, you know what? I <laughs> all in. I can't. Do nothing but agree with you 100%. Go on everything you just said right now. Minshew, I believe, is in the driver's seat because he had a better game, but it's because he had more drives. We're only going up a small thing, but when you're talking about a 93 play drive or a 93 yard drive, that's a fucking drive that O'Connor It is 100%. Had. So we got to respect that. And here's the I would have loved to see you punch it in the end zone. Oh, absolutely. Now, here's the play, guys, that Tony's talking about. We got Brock Bowers lined up at the H or at the fullback position. You see the Raiders are in a what double tight, two tight end. They're in 12 personnel, basically, given that 12 personnel look. So we'll come here. Guys, you see him. They go play. <coughs> what I love about this play is look at this, guys. The play action, you can see the influence that it's having on these guys right here, on the linebacking group. All eyes are sucked up. Everybody's looking in the backfield. With Brock Bowers' speed and his ability to catch the football, that he gets out to the flat. Boom, we got him highlighted here. Courtesy of Raider Homer. Goes upfield. Right, man, hey, talking about a crucial first down, third and one. Yeah, you know what this gives me a little bit of, of thoughts. Do you guys remember of Marcel Reese? Mm-hmm. Doesn't that remind you a little bit of Marcel Reese back in the day? Catch the ball in the flat. Yeah, get upfield, make a play happen. Yep. Here's what uh, what else is awesome about that setup. You still got Mayer down there, right? So you got to account for him. Dude, I mean, I I, I, re- I really like the offense with the two tight ends. Yeah. If you think about it, too, the fullback is usually the blocking back, uh, you know, maybe short yardage up the middle. But when you go in a a man defense, you can catch them slipping because they're going to crash down, like you said. They're going to have their eyes in the backfield. And if we can just get the short yardage not up the middle when it's expected – and get out, and he's going to be fast. He's going to be beating those linebackers off the ball. So that's probably who's going to be on him anyways. So, like, it was enough to make you go, oh, man, let's see what they're going to do. Like, 100%. I mean, there's so much. And now it, now it's making defensive coordinators go, oh, shit. Like, that formation is dangerous, man, because you, you, don't, you don't know if they're going – well, uh, uh, handing the ball me. off to Bowers? Are you handing the ball off to Zeus? Are you running the play action like they did there? 
Or, I mean, are you running some sort of quick, uh, you know, three step game? I mean, I mean, uh, so much. look so at what much. Bowers could do. So, I mean, w- look at the 49ers, for example. They got oh, Kyle Juszczyk, right, as, as their fullback. He's Bowers is going to be doing what he can do, Debo can do, and Kittle. Not to mention, throw him down on the line and let him be another another blocker. No, absolutely. I mean, like, Bowers can do a lot of things. Guys, I got a ton of film for us, like, if we want to, like, get into that. But I'd be like, again. Oh, we'd be here all night. That. Yeah, we'd be here all night <laughs> because we got it. And I'd be like, but what I can say is this. By breaking down the film and looking at it is it's like you guys said. It's an exciting time because with this personnel grouping it's not a, like a formation you know you could just do different things with this personnel grouping because right there they were in 12 personnel they went two full or you know but instead of having a fullback or two running backs they had a tight end at that spot which makes it 12 personnel so it's really interesting to see the way that Getsy is thinking and seeing the way that Bowers is being used hey we saw him line up at wide receiver you see him lined up at tight end. Mm-hmm. You see him lined up at fullback. How do you plan for that? How do you say, hey, you know what? This guy is going to be right here. This is what Getsy is really bringing to the table. And, and it makes me excited, like Tony said. Hey, we're sitting here going like game two versus these Cowboys. The Cowboys had a really stout defense against the Rams. I mean, like, yeah, they ended up losing at the end. But if you saw the first half, the first half was like 3-3. Yeah, that was their strong point last year. I mean, that, we, we got, we're we going to see a good defense. And this is where, like, I think the quarterbacks are going to separate. And, guys, we're going to get into a little bit of the film on the quarterbacks to see how what they did, big plays like that. Like I told you guys, hey, Aiden O'Connell had some throws in the first drive, guys. He had a drive. He had a drive. Yeah. Let's go over AOC first, all right, guys? We're and going. shout out to the defense, though, because that, that uh, fork down stop in the red zone inside the five was badass. Freaking huge, okay? I'm going to start with right now, one, like, let's start with the positive, all right, that we saw here. Um, I got Aiden O'Connell here moving around in the pocket, okay? Because we said, hey, that's something we needed to see at him, right? We got Aiden O'Connell saying, hey, I can do this. So, hold on here. All right, guys, so on this play here, we got Aiden O'Connell. Tell us the, the guy to shift and ball snap. You see him move up, like you see this here, guys. The pocket is well formed, but again, Austin Pay gets beat. Austin Pay got beat here by Turner. That turns up the field. This is where I feel like he's improved, guys. On this play, he slides up in the pocket and makes this absolute dime to Mayers. If you guys saw this in the live game, this is where his development has come. If you see them going against that, hey, you know what we said. His inability to move in the pocket, his inability to extend the play was the biggest issue. In this drive, Aiden, while getting sacked on one play, he did show me that he has improved on some pocket awareness. Agreed. Let me, let me get you with that. What are your thoughts on that? Did, where did Aiden O'Connell, did he improve on pocket awareness? Did, where did you see improvements? Where did you see? No, I... I I definitely did. You know, a couple of plays he stepped up, uh, of what you know to avoid the pressure, made the throw, made it made a good accurate throw. Um, one time I believe he stepped up and over to the side. Um, that that sack from Turner, he did not feel that whatsoever. He, I mean, he the the heat was in his face and he had no no awareness of the backside whatsoever. Okay. All in so, or Tony? It definitely needs a little more improvement. I mean, obviously, a work in progress. Absolutely, brother. No, I, I couldn't agree more. I'd be like, we have a young rookie. We have a guy that needs to get better. We, we saw that. Now, My Tony, buddy, uh, real quick, my buddy Tony out here, we were talking. He goes, <laughs> man, 
He said, uh, he, he said, AOC should have been watching six hours of Tom Brady film every fucking day this offseason. I'll tell you like this. I watched the previous, or I did a previous show on uh, Section 105 Media, and I'm telling you, when he moved in the pocket on that play, looking at it, it was Brady-esque. Oh, yeah, 100%. Good. He moved, he slid, he squared up, he made that throw. I said, and, like, this is where, you know, I love Doug and Raider Homer. Shout out to Raider Homer. Uh-huh. He was like, yo, like, you can't say brady S because, you know, like, it's not like Tom Brady. Absolutely, it's not like Tom Brady. But at the same time, I felt like in that moment, in that play, he moved like him. So, hey, let me let me get with Tony B. Tony B., what are your thoughts on Aiden O'Connell, on his pocket awareness? Do you feel like he improved on that? Or do you feel like, hey, you know, this was still a disaster? I had a feeling like he was playing like he was the starter. Like, he played with, like uh... – a little bit of a confidence, not necessarily a swagger, but a little bit, but enough to where he felt like I'm supposed to be here. Like he wasn't supposed to be there at other times. Now he believes that's his spot to lose. He felt like he was, play- I felt like he was playing with a confidence and that comes with the pocket awareness, the ability to be able to move a little bit, like, he's starting to go, okay, let's play. Like, I want, you know. I... Uh, Him uh, and uh-oh. Gardner Minshew. Like, yeah. it was, like I was saying earlier, we won when we should have. And I believe they both showed that this decision is not going to be an easy one. No, absolutely. And, and so, I really do think that, his pocket awareness, his confidence, and everything is looking starter esque. <laughs> I like the word starter esque. All right, Val. And, and real quick, I don't back to your your Brady s comment. You know, I don't think I don't think you know people are looking for him to step in and be Tom Brady, right? But but compare your game to somebody and that that's the most comparable to right yeah. lack of mobility like i mean and, and just and just watch the dude i mean love him or hate him the dude's the fucking greatest quarterback of all time well yeah, i mean absolutely. watch learn i mean he should be watching several quarterbacks but no 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 you're you're not lying i'd be like hey and you said hey brady's one of the best to do it I'd be like, if you're going to be compared to anybody and hold yourself to any standard, you might as well hold yourself to a high standard. Yeah, 100%. Might as well say like, hey, this guy's the best to do it. I'm going to do the same. You know? So We don't need him to We don't need him to look at Randall Cunningham-type videos. That's not the style of play he's going to be playing. He's that upright pocket quarterback that needs to get the ball out a little bit faster. Um. And so he doesn't need to watch videos of players that he's not going to emulate on game day. He needs to look at that pocket. I mean, there's, like he said, like Owen said, you ain't going to look at anybody better. Like he's the greatest of all time. So why would you not look at someone to learn from the best? That hurt yeah. to say. And, and you nailed it. Get, getting rid of the ball quicker because that sack, he was pushing four seconds. That ball needed to be gone quick, especially in the red zone. We're going to get into that play. But I want to get Val's thoughts on if she got this improvement, and then we'll go through a series of plays here, guys. We're gonna go. We're, we're gonna rack up like three quick plays, showing you know some plays on this drive, and then we'll get into that sack. So, Val, did you see any improvement in AOC's performance? Yeah, I did. It was. It, I did. Um. Just. And it wasn't just on him, but it was just uh, it just in general. You just you see improvement, and you you see differences, and so I liked what I saw. I saw competition within each other. Not, I mean, comp- yes, comp- competing against each other, but still as a team. If that makes any sense, like, no, absolutely. So I don't. 
Yeah, it was it was good to like I said, I really enjoyed observing, seeing small changes, seeing improvements. Like I said, it I'm just so hyped. I'm hyped. I, I need the season to start like now. Like now. Okay. Yo. So guys, we are almost at the thirty minute mark. I'm gonna run through some plays and then we'll wrap this up. We'll get the offensive line, or we'll get the offense, and then we'll get into next week's game. Okay. So. And then I got. A... What's up, yo? <laughs> I said, then I got a story. I got okay. two stories. Well, well, yeah, then we'll get into the shot without story. All right, hey guys. So here I got O'Connell to to Mayors, courtesy again of our boy. Douglas Sheffield at Section 105 Media. So we get here the play action. As you get him dropping back, he drops back and he finds Jacoby Mayers wide open for a big shot downfield. That was something that we were missing last year. That was mm-hmm. something that we were saying, hey, we needed a lot of that. Let me get mm-hmm. another play going here, guys. This is going to be the big time sack that we were talking about, okay? So, let me get here. Share this screen here, guys. Okay, guys, here we got A. As you guys can see, they are an 11 personnel because you got one tight end attached, one running back. He's off to the right. So, again, the heavy side of the formation is off to the right-hand side. You get a motion call. Yep. Here is, like, here's the issue, guys. Do you guys see this down here at the bottom left? The two yeah. receivers are in the same spot. There's two guys that have run into each other. You see Austin Pay has already been beat. I'd be like, he's on the ground. He got cooked. He got cooked. Um, here, at the same time, there's no pocket awareness. Zero right here. I'd be like, if we talked about it, he slides back. There, there, he didn't feel that backside pressure. And that's he, I mean, he steps to the left. He, he's, he, I believe there was a tight end in that corner of the end zone. Yep, and I'd be like, I'm gonna give you guys a, I'm gonna give you guys another view here, okay? Um, what it looks like. Okay, so if you see it here, there. If he steps up, if he moves to his left, but at the same time, Minshew deals with the same thing. Minshew likes to roll out to his right. In my opinion, though, once you see that those two receivers have run into that same spot, you need to immediately go on to your next read. Stays locked onto that read too long, and that's what happens. Mm-hmm. He got sacked, and I'd be like, guys, there was a lot of good stuff on that drive from them. A Tom. lot of good stuff. So we can't say that, hey, we didn't see a lot of good things. But in my opinion, again, Minshew got a little bit more because he had four drives. He scored 20 points in the second quarter. When, when you showed that video and that clip, was the, the, the left. He could, oh, you there, Tony? Tony? See that hole hey. to step up into. We didn't hear none of what you said, brother. Yeah, yeah, it kind of glitched out, brother. Tony, you froze on us. He might. I have, think it did. He might have froze. All right. Well, I think so. I keep. <laughs> yeah, he keeps freezing and I'm freezing. You know that play too. Also reminds me a little bit of uh, of that play in Kansas City on Christmas Day. You know, he uh, uh, where where the pocket broke down, and he, I mean, if he would have just stepped up into the left, 
he would have extended a play and picked up a first down in Kansas City. Um, that that left is definitely a weakness for him. Yeah. And I feel like if it's not straight play. or to the right, he, he's in trouble. No. Uh, no, and I agree. And I mean, like, that's where we, you know, both quarterbacks need to work and develop. And Tony gets up that message that he did freeze. So, you know, we'll, hopefully he can get back on and get that figured out. But, yeah. And I mean, like, but the – uh... Go ahead. The two touchdown throws that Gardner had were fucking money. All right. Well, you know what? You want to talk about big time throws by Gardner Minshew? Yeah. I mean, we, uh, we covered Aiden. We, we got to cover them both, right? All right. Mm-hmm. I got some stuff on uh, Gardner Minshew right here. Let's see here. <coughs> okay. Here's a third and one. Okay, situation for a Gardner or a second and six for Gardner Minshew where he hits Tucker for a big game. Hey, you know that Tucker's big games both came from Gardner Minshew. Yeah, so and he averaged about 36 yards of catch. Shout out to Tucker for coming up with the catches because he's been struggling in camp. Yep. And here we go. Like, uh, we got it slow motion. So you see here, you see Uncle Rico drop back. Takes a three-step drop from that play action at the very top. Boom. Shuffles his feet. He actually took a couple more shuffles. Drives up, man. And he throws it. Bro, this is an absolute dime. Yep. In between the coverage. Okay? Like, you see that? He's in between defenders. Finds Tucker. A huge game. But that's the first down right there. That sets up the first score. Yep. Uh, let's see here. I got the other play here for you guys. He definitely he definitely threw the ball well into into coverage. Yeah, I mean, like he made a lot of big time plays, man. And I mean, he did. Like, I'll tell you and what. that's that's what you get though with the experience, right? That he's had the last couple of years versus Aiden being a young guy. Yep, and that's mm-hmm. what you bring him in for. You brought yeah, 100%. him one hundred percent experience. Because of what he can do. So that's why I'm like, yo, you're going to get that with Minshew. Here we got Minshew, okay? It's third and 11, okay? Drops back. I be mean, Tucker eats up this receiver on the bottom. He does a little tippy tap, boom, or that corner on the bottom. Then Oh, yeah, this was the over-the-shoulder one. Oh, this is an absolute dime. Gardner Minshew puts it in a spot, man, outside shoulder. Yep. And We're Tucker had the turn. Play. Yep. Tucker makes a great adjustment, lays huge. out. Bro, huge first down. Huge. I mean, like, I, I love going over the touchdowns, but I love going over things that set up those touchdowns. 100%. Especially when they're big time plays like that. And mm-hmm. that's where I agree with you guys that Gardner Menchu got on top of AOC for this game. Because it was like, hey, you know what? He had a lot more big time plays and he showed. But in this game, he's gonna go against the Cowboys once. He's not gonna go against the twos. So that right there is gonna show us a little bit of hey, what can you do? Like I right. was this for real or is this something that you know what? Like was but all right guys, now we talked, you know, a little bit of AOC, a little bit of Gardner. We talked about who we thought was ahead on offense. Raider defense, a little bit suspect on the ins- on the run game. That's where I'm concerned. We got they gave up that up. huge run. Oh, we got gassed to make up it ten at- seven. Yep, we got gassed up. We had a couple issues. I mean, Jack Jones being Jack Jones, doing Jack Jones things, making big time interceptions. You know, you see Crosby coming in and making you know being disruptive, being himself. But another key player that I actually have some film on was Christian Wilkerson and Malcolm Coons. If you guys see it here, okay, I got here. Hold on, guys. Here's one player that I really loved. Here's one player that I said, yo, 
This is why you bring this type of beef. Okay? You get... Here's the run play, okay? First of all, guys, you got Christian Wilkins lined up right here, okay? You got Malcolm Koontz lined up outside of him. He takes on one blocker, two blockers, disrupts the play right to Malcolm Koontz. I'd be like a guy like that. That's what you pay big time money for. I'm going to replay it right here. I'd be like, guys, this is an absolute disruptor up the middle. We need more of that. You know, and that's what I saw from Christian Wilkins right there. Then we got one more of him in the pass rush. Max hasn't had that. He doesn't have – he's never had that. You're right. He's never had that tandem. Now he has that tandem opposite side and inside. That's where it's like, hey, who are you going to block? Who are you going to take on? Who are you going to say, hey, that's got, that's the guy we're going to give a, a, a double team to? And he's hey, never – he's, yeah, he's never had it in the middle, but he's had it on the outside. And in Gakwe, you know, Chandler had bright spots at times during Absolutely. his crackhead year. Hey, hey, so look at it here, guys. We got basically one tight end. So they're in 11 personnel. You got this wide receiver tight. You got, I think it looks like an over front on the defensive line with the, the, the backs or the linebackers actually playing under. So then you see this big gap right here at the right ta- or in between the right tackle and the tight end. There's a huge gap right here. This is a, this is a huge gap that you can run off tackle. That's what we got hit on when they ran that big play. That's why you see, you know, the safety coming down to fill that. Now, you see Christian Wilkins, man. They always say heavy hands is something that's crucial for defensive linemen. Look at these heavy hands, bro. He grabs 67, uses them like a ragdoll, spits them off like nothing. Hey, you got play action from Sam Darnold, but guess what? Big daddy from the inside, and that's allowing Max Crosby to have a one-on-one on the outside. This is exactly what you were talking about, all in. Another guy right next to you that commands that type of presence that says, hey, Max, we're going to give you a one-on-one. But this guy beats a double team, makes Sam Darnold step up in the pocket, get uncomfortable, and make a bad throw. So, guys, you know, things like that makes me excited. I know that our defense is going to get together. I know against the Cowboys, it's going to get really interesting. I'm going to tell you right now, Trey Lance, okay. Oh, we're going to eat his shit up. We're going to be chasing him all over the field. We're going to be uh, in hot pursuit. Guys, let's You better pack a lunch. It's going to be a long fucking day. Yep. It's going to be a long day. So let's get into the Cowboys then. First of all, guys, if you guys are down in Dallas, Texas, you guys need to go down to Chill Grapevine because they are going to have Raiders super fans are going to have Cowboys super fans. Everybody in their mother in the state of the great state of Texas will be at Joe Grapevine. You'll see Val. You'll see Shit Show Joe. You'll see the crew. You'll see everybody down there having a great time. We're going to pack it out. Let's go. Come on down. Yep. Is he missing well, one person, Alan? Huh? Is he missing one person? Who? Who am I missing? I got Raider Ben. I got Adrian Val. I got Shit Show Joe. I got who Is he still coming out? Who? O'Neal? Oh. Uh, I think so. I'm not 100% sure. I believe Warren will be there, though. He's just coming to hang out. He's not doing an autograph session or anything. Yeah. So, hey, just coming down, you'll be able to rub shoulders with former Raiders players. They might not be doing anything formal, but they'll be there, you know, doing things, having a great time. So, he's really cool. Yeah, he's really nice. I really like him and his kids. Really laid they're, back. Yeah, really, really laid back. But, guys, you guys are in the thick of it this week. You guys are in the actual war zone in the state of Texas against them Cowgirls. 
You guys are in enemy territory right now. What are oh. your guys' expectations for Saturday game day? So, now, first of we're going to, I mean, it's going to be a great time. We're going to be supporting, you know, we're going to show up, support, you know, TBH Dallas, and you know, show them some love. Um, since they are, you know, they're hosting this, you know, they got, it'll be good. Um, I'm excited to see the words between us. The, it, I know it'll be it'll be tamed, but still, it doesn't matter if it's preseason or not. It's the freaking Cowboys, first of all. And there's always some little tension there because I have been getting a lot of crap talked to me this week. Okay, right. and I'm, it's gonna be a great time. And you know, Shit Show Joe's gonna be yelling out there. He's gonna. Oh, yeah, it's going to be a party. It's going to be a great time. I love Chill Great Bond. I love the environment that TBH Dallas has down there. I mean, it's always a good time. Uh, shoot, when you get picked up by the uh, by the man himself, the legendary Shit Show Joe, in a Raider vehicle with uh, Bodellos in hand. Game with you know, him. It's going to be a good time. <laughs> you don't know what you're getting into, but you're going to laugh. That's for sure. Yeah. Yo, all in. David, what are you expecting from our Raiders this Saturday against them Dallas Cowgirls? I I think the first half will be a close game like they like Dallas had with LA, man. It's gonna be a tight game. Uh I expect one of these quarterbacks to fucking take the job this week. Uh AP said he's gonna name a starter next week, so this is it, man. Put your fucking big boy pants on and fucking get ready. Because I think it's uh, and, and it'll be it'll be good to see Gardner. Because if I, I don't remember Gardner getting too many reps with Bowers and Mayer and Myers. Um, so it'll be good to see him get some reps with those guys. Uh, I'm, I wonder if Tay's gonna play a few plays this week. The rest of the starters have, so I'm sure he he'll get some reps. So he'll probably get some reps with Gardner. It'll be interesting to see how all that goes, but. Man, I just want to see. I just want to see guys like last week. Man, compete, compete. Go out and and fucking win that job. There's a few positions. The line's got to tighten up. Uh, the defense, the run game's got to tighten up. Love the red zone stop, but goddamn, that opening drive, that first quarter, killed the defense. We can't. We we gotta we gotta get some more stops. Uh, you know what? I agree with you, man. So, um. Thoughts on the Dallas game. This is what I expect. Okay. Um, offensively, whatever quarterback doesn't make the mistakes, whatever quarterback puts the ball downfield and puts us in a position to win the game, like AP said, will win the quarterback debate. If Gardner Menchu comes out and throws absolute strikes and that first drive is a touchdown, don't be amazed if he doesn't play the rest of the game. I'll be like, I could really see them being like, hey, you know what? We got one. Maybe. And he said a quarter. He said they'll play a quarter. Yeah, so like last week. Maybe one, two drives. And if those two drives end up in, in serious points, in seven, I can really see them being like, hey, man, this guy came out. He led the offense, and he got a seven. Aiden did a great job last week. He came out the first drive. He was efficient, went seven for nine. And he got us into the red zone. Now he did suffer those big time sacks and those big time plays. But that was the one thing that we all talked about. We need to score points. We need a team that's going to go out there, or a guy that's going to go out there and not just manage the game, but put us in positions to win the game. Yeah. Um, I think the defensively, you will see the run game be a lot more, will be a lot more stout against the run game. I see us um, definitely, you know, probably getting our ass chewed this week about how inefficient we were with allowing 148 yards against the Vikings, which is bullshit. That monster run in the second quarter, too, was fuck killer, man, for that touchdown. And I'd be like, that stuff we need to clear up. And I think we'll clear it up. And I think that yeah. you'll see massive improvements on that. But it's really going to be interesting because I think – we are going to see um, more of Dylan Labe. 
Jim and Lowry. Brand, I, I want to see it. Things, dude. He did a lot. He played. Sp- I, I have, I, I, but the show would go too long. Like, I have clips of him um, going special teams, going, uh, doing kickoff return. He does so many things, but I want to see what we are really going to do with this kid because we have a lot of weapons. Yeah, I think he's going to work his way into the rotation at some point. May not be early. You know, yeah. it may be midseason, but I, I think he's going to work his way in. Yeah, and I think so too, and I think he's going to become an integral part of this team. Yeah. Also, like what I'm seeing is, guys, I saw the energy. I don't know if you guys saw it, but the energy that the team came out with and the fight, oh, shit, man. That energy that AP is bringing to the team is what exactly what this team needed. Yep. That want, that drive, that mm-hmm. will to win. The you know what it is, man? For, to me, it's not, you know, the last – we'll just go with the last two coaches, right? And, yeah. and McDumdum and fucking Gruden. They're very much, this is my way. Shut the fuck up. This is the way we're doing it. Yep. And if you don't like it, fucking you're gone. Right? AP's not. It, it, it's AP's team, but he tells the guy, hey, this is your team. You know what I mean? It's No, absolutely. It's just a different it's a it's a different approach, man. And I think <clears throat> I think with today's players, it's the approach you have to have. No, yeah, you do. I agree with you. And now that the, the it's like you have to work with your guys. It's not like do what I say. Yeah, it's not. Gruden, Gruden had the approach that it was the uh, the 98 to 02 fucking Raiders. And then the, the early years he was in Tampa, you know, it was the, the yelling and the rah rah. And, and, and just don't work with these fucking young, young cats today. <laughs> it's a different generation. That's and I mean, if you, I mean, you coach Will, you, under, you understand it for sure. And I, you know, I coached my son's baseball for years. Uh, it's it's different than when you and I came up. No, absolutely. You're, you're absolutely right, man. And that's why coaches have to change. They have to adapt. They have to, you know, refine their game as well. It's not just, you know, keep the same. You have to keep getting better. But, all right, guys. Yo, we're going to wrap up the show. Guys, are we getting the win in Dallas? Hell Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, yo. So we are expecting a win in Dallas, guys. Again, if in Ve- you no, guys, it's in Vegas. Oh, it's in Vegas. We are expecting yeah. the win against the Cowgirls. Okay, but again, if you guys are in the great state of Texas in Dallas, make sure you guys go down to Kill Grapevine. Make sure you hit up our boy All In, or you hit up our girl Val. They'll make sure they take care of you. Make sure that, hey, man, they, everything's done. If you guys are in the Northwest, we will be in Seattle for a live podcast with our boy Tony B that, you know, is having some internet issues. So we'll make <laughs> sure to get those handled while we're there. And you know what? We'll be there at Tammy's in Tacoma, Washington. So make sure you stop by. And if you guys are in Reno, Make sure you stop by Chica's Bar and Grill as they're going to be having a great time there. And they're going to be having a small soiree where Sacramento and other groups are going to join them together. But, guys, you guys got – oh, we also got badass – Badass bosses flag football tournament Labor Day weekend. Right. I will put the flyer up. We just did it. We did it on the last pod. So, guys, the flyers, all these flyers will be going up. And Val, we got to end it with Val story time. Man, I've been waiting all, like, off season to be able to come on here and tell my stories. So, remember, I think I, I may have already mentioned it to you guys, but the guy at the salon that's, like, he's a cowboy fan by default. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So, I, got there. I haven't really chopped it up with him, if at all. And so uh, he's like, oh, he was walking past. So I said, hey, are you ready to switch teams yet? Or are, you, or are you still a Cowboys fan by default? He's like, yeah, well, you know, um, I've been a, a University of, um, what do you say, uh, a long, he's, he's a, he was a Longhorns fan, right? 
Yeah. I've been a university uh, fan for a long time, and and I said, hold on, no, 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 I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about college football. He goes, <clears throat> yeah. I said, so what is it? He was like, oh, you know, Cowboys, no matter what. And I was like, what? He goes, I can't just abandon my team. I said, well, y'all Cowboy fans do anyways when you lose. So what's the difference? And so he's like, whatever, we're going to champion. We're going to championship this year. Oh, and I was, I was <laughs> typical fucking Cowboy, Cowboy fan. Cowboy fan. Yep. Like, that sounds really familiar. I think you told me that last season. And he was like, no, we go in this time. We're going all the way. And I was like, huh i was like so you're not you guys aren't gonna be one and done and so he was like all right let's make a bet and i said okay so what you want to bet sir and he was like if we go he goes we don't make it to the championship i owe you uh you know the same pedicure you always get i'm like i'm like okay cool like it's 70 bucks you know but it's the best and uh and he goes but you know if cowboys make it to the championship which we will, he goes, you got to pay me 69 bucks. And I'm like, I pay that anyways. How is that a bet? And so he was like, well, are you scared? I was like, nope, I want my free pedicure. So um, we shook on it. And so I was like, don't go back on your work because I know where you work. Well, don't go back on your word. I said, I know where you work because his parents own it. And then I said, you know, why don't you come out and watch the game with us? And he just looked at me and I said, Yeah. I went and I showed him the flyers. I went to the block hole Dallas chapter. I went to there. I'm like, yeah, look, it's right here. It's here and chill. I gave him the address. He put in his thing. He was like, all right, bet. I said, you're a cowboy fan. I look at these cowboy super fans. And he goes, oh, yeah. He goes, I've never been to a watch party with like other. I said, you should totally come. And I was like, and there's going to be all of us Raider fans. And he goes, oh, I was like, we're not going to hurry. Like, it's cool. Just come out. So he's like, he, he's coming out, Alan. Yeah, Alan, so watch well, out for the Manny and Petty guy. Yeah. <laughs> Saturday, and I said, I was like, I'm not responsible for any feelings hurt. And he just looked at me, he goes, my feelings are a little bit hurt. I said, that's what you say now. And right. said, huh? Yeah, I'm like, you just wait. <laughs> wait till Saturday. Yeah, that's how I was like, you just wait. And then, like, today, you know, like I said, people have been giving me crap all week. And today I was out with my seniors and we had just got back on the bus. I pushed the car across and I'm going back and some guy called me over. I was like, what's this guy want? I was like, yes, sir. Like all like polite and shit. Cause I, you know, I got my name tag. I'm with the bus. He goes, I just want to tell you, he was like complimenting me. Right. He was like, he's fine. You're perfect. Head to toe, blah, blah, blah. And I said, oh, okay, thanks. Like I was like ready to go. I was like, okay. He's like, um, are you single? And I was like, no. I was like, no, I have a boyfriend. He goes, oh, man. Well, he was like, like, you, like, just a boyfriend? And I was like, well, you know, he's a Raiders fan. And he was like, oh, he's like, yeah. He goes, I'm a Cowboys fan. I said, then it really won't work. I was like, because in the relationship, you would be the bitch. And then he was like, <laughs> he looked at me. Like, oh, here. So, like, turned around. And then I was like, you know, I was like, all right. Okay. <sighs> And then I was like, wait a minute, hold on. The seniors were asking me what the guy was asking me. What is he talking to me about? I'm in front of our bus. I was like, hold on. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> but it was the funniest because, like, dude, he just looked at me like, like, he was just in shock. And I was just like, I'm sorry. Like, I, did I offend you? Am I so pretty? <laughs> it, was, it was funny. <laughs> I know. Like, yeah. Oh my uh, God! But, uh, uh, all right. Uh, so if you got a dude that is offended there, you know who invited him too. <laughs> you got the petty guy, and then you got the offended guy. So guys, if you she see sure anybody like that, that chill grapevine, make sure you let them know that Lady Val was the one that invited them. <laughs> She's in, she's inviting she's inviting the fruit pops. Let's go. <laughs> the fruit pops. I, that guy was so offended he drove off. Okay, I did not invite him. I only invited the Manny Petty guy. <laughs> like, SSJ would be proud of me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> what the heck? A thumbs up over here? What the heck? I want to stuff. 
what's going on. Yeah, I don't God know what you're it. doing. I don't know what's going I don't know on. What I'm Oh, Val, Val, you know her thing. Anyway. <laughs> All, right. All right, guys. Well, hey, we're going to wrap up the show. Hey, I want to thank you guys for coming on the show. You guys know it's much love always, man. And guess what, guys? It's all part of one nation, one team. It's all about the... <laughs> Ro-